So let's now talk about recombinant DNA and restriction enzymes. Recombinant DNA is DNA from two or more different sources that is combined into one DNA molecule. And this is very important because it means that we can combine DNA from two or more different species. So for example, we can do this with human and bacterial DNA. If we want to produce an insulin protein in mass production for diabetes patients, we can use recombinant DNA technology. So if this is my human DNA chromosome, and here's my plasmid DNA, and say on my human DNA, I have an insulin gene that I want to isolate, and I want to produce it in mass production, I will use a restriction enzyme to cut the insulin gene and isolate it. Here is our isolated insulin gene. I can then insert this into a plasmid if I cut the plasmid with the same restriction enzyme. So for example, once we do that and we insert the insulin gene, our plasmid might look like this. We can then insert the plasmid into a bacterial cell and here's our bacterial cell, and it'll have the normal bacterial chromosome, but it also has the plasmid. And we can then replicate the bacterial cell multiple times to produce multiple of these plasmid with the insulin gene. So here we're gonna repl replicate our bacterial cell. So ultimately the steps to make recombinant DNA our first, we're going to cut the plasmid and the human or donor DNA with the same restriction enzymes. And this is key because you want to produce the same sticky ends so that you can ligate the DNA together. Step two is that we're going to isolate our gene of interest. In this case, our gene of interest was the insulin gene. And step three is that we're going to introduce this gene of interest into our plasmid. Finally, we're going to put the plasmid into a bacterial cell and we can then replicate the bacterial cell multiple times to produce our gene of interest. Let's now talk about restriction enzymes. So restriction enzymes cut at very specific sequences that are called palindromic palindromic sequences. And restriction enzymes will produce either blunt or sticky ends. And we'll talk about these in a minute. So to define a palindromic sequence, they, they, it's a sequence that reads the same in the five prime to three prime direction in both strands. So for example, if we have these two sequences of DNA, the first one is gonna read from the five prime to three prime direction, CCGG. And on the second strand, it's also five prime CCGG. In our second example, the first strand from five prime to three prime is GTATC, but the second strand is GATAC. So if we were to ask which sequence would be cut by a restriction enzyme, if we look at the first one, we see that every single nucleotide matches in the five prime to three prime direction. But in the second strand, the G and the G match, but T and A don't match. As a result, the first sequence would be most likely to be cut by a restriction enzyme because it's palindromic. It reads the same in the five prime to three prime direction. What if I asked you what fragments would be generated by certain cut sites? So what fragments would be produced from these cut sites. 
So if we have these sequences of DNA, I'm gonna use the arrows to guide me to create the shape of the fragments. So here, our resulting fragments are gonna be five prime, CC, and three prime, GG, from the first fragment on the left. And then on the right, we have GG three prime and CC five prime. And this is called blunt ends because we have cut the sequence straight in the center, which means that we haven't produced any overhangs. In the second example, again, I'm going to follow the arrows to create the shape of the fragments. And we get 5 prime GG and 3 prime CCTA. And similarly on the right, we're going to get a fragment. In this example, we have produced sticky ends, so we have overhangs. When we combine this DNA sequence with another one, there are complementary overhangs that can ligate together. Now in the third example, we're going to do the same thing where we use the arrows to create fragments. And the resulting fragments are 5 prime CTGC and 3 prime GA. And we're just going to copy the fragment on the right. And again, this produces sticky ends. And our overhangs are GC and CG. Now, another kind of problem that you might get is that you may be shown a plasmid and asked what the gel electrophoresis for it would look like. So what would the gel electrophoresis look like for each of the restriction fragments created by the restriction enzymes below? Now, if this is my plasmid, and on my plasmid, we have various cut sites, as well as the ampicillin resistance gene, the origin of replication, and the bacterial promoter, and our plasmid is 5 kilobases long. And if on the right side, I've, I have a gel electrophoresis that shows the standard sizes of the DNA bands, as well as our restriction enzymes X, Y, and Z, if we start with X, and we cut the plasmid at the restriction enzyme cut site for X, we're gonna get this one big fragment. And this is five kilobases long, which means that on our gel electrophoresis, we're gonna have a band at five KB. If we do the same for the cut sites at Y, we're gonna get one restriction fragment on the left, and here we're gonna get another restriction fragment. And the one on the left is going to be approximately 1,500 base pairs plus 2,000 base pairs long. So if we add 2,000 plus 1,500, we'll get 3,500 base pairs long, which is equal to 3.5 KB. So here on the right, I'm going to indicate that as with a band at 3.5. If we also do this with the second fragment created by the restriction enzyme Y, we'll find that if we do 3,000 base pairs minus 1,500 base pairs, we get 1,500 base pairs. This fragment is 1,500 base pairs long, and I'll indicate that as a band at 1.5 on the gel. And finally, if we do this with the restriction enzyme Z, we'll get a fragment that's 1,000 plus 500 base pairs long. So it'll be 1,500 base pairs, and that's, that'll be indicated at 1.5 KB on the gel. And if we do the same with the second fragment, we can do 4,000 minus 500 base pairs and get 3,500 base pairs long 
which is shown on the gel on the right. So in this way, we can use a plasmid and the restriction enzyme cut sites on the plasmid to determine what the gel electrophoresis for certain restriction enzymes would look like.